So this is a video that I was really, really hoping that I didn't have to make. But if we're going to play this game, and the game is doing things to challenge yourself and to improve yourself and to push as hard and as far as you possibly can to find your limits so that you go past them and become a better person because of it, then you can't be scared to talk about failure and you can't not share setbacks that you've had with people just because you only want to share all the good things and the times that you want. I don't think that's helpful to anyone. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am a first year family medicine resident currently working in Canada and we are going to rip the band-aid off early. I have officially gotten back all of my board exam scores that I wrote in the last year. And I say all because there were quite a few that I wrote in the last few months. And I just figured out a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, that I did not pass the step two exam. I failed the step two exam. And the pass mark when I wrote, I think was a 209. I got a 198. So it was just, it was just a few questions shy of passing the exam. And when I do these videos, I do them with the purpose of trying to help people and maybe show a little bit about what happened to me and share my experiences so that people going through something similar could learn a little bit from it. I don't know how helpful this video is going to be for other people, but I want to set the ground rules right now. Number one, this is not a video trying to get sympathy from people and say that I feel bad, that that's not what this is about. This is not going to be a video about me giving up and not knowing what to do next. But what this is going to be a video about is me explaining what happened, what area I think I went wrong, and my plans for what comes next and how we're gonna push through this. So for those of you that have not seen some of the other videos on my channel before, maybe this is the first one that got recommended to you through YouTube or whatever, but um, I wrote three board exams in succession and I wrote them over the course of three months. So it was one board exam every single month. I wrote the step one in April, I passed that one. I wrote the Canadian board exam in um, May, so one month later, I think it was actually a few weeks shy of one month later, and I did really, really well, actually. I passed the Canadian exam with a, with a pretty good score. I got a 252 for only studying for about three weeks. And then I wrote the step two about a month after I wrote the Canadian board exam and I got the score that I just said. So a lot of people asked me in the comment section before why I did the American exam because I am a Canadian doctor here in Canada doing my residency. And the majority of us do not do the American exams as well. The curriculum is decently different and I think you can see that between my step two score and my Canadian exam score but I wanted to do it basically for two reasons the number one reason is that I'm 26 years old right now my career from this point forward I'm assuming it's gonna go at least another 35 to, to 40 years and that's a long time to really think about in terms of a career and I don't know what will come up in the future I would rather have all of the exams all of my qualifications with me right now just in case I need them in the future because when I'm 40 if you have a family you don't want to sit down and study for hours and hours a day it's just better to do them now in my opinion and the second reason why I did the American exams is because it was different it was different and being a Canadian student I was expected to pass the Canadian exams I knew that I could and would pass the Canadian exam but I was just I had this idea that why is it that there is a whole different healthcare system just a few like kilometers away from my house because I live in a border town in Niagara Falls and it's just different down there. They learn different things and the way medical school works. And I didn't want to have that area of uncertainty. I am a big fan of pushing myself and challenging myself to do different things and learn different things for the sake of improvement. And I think that was another really big reason why I am currently going through the process of getting all my American exams done too. Now, I really don't want this video to go too long today. So I'm going to now move on to what my prep was like for step two. So basically I studied for three months during the end of medical school while I was applying to residency for step one. I was studying during residency applications. I was studying during my final exams for medical school. And I wrote step one while I was still in medical school. So that was in the first week and a half of April. And then after I wrote step one and after I'd done all of my medical school exams and things, I was, I was pretty tired already after a long step one is a grueling exam for those of you that have wrote it. It's eight hours. It's really just a crappy exam, but you have to, you have to do it. And the prep and writing it, you're not, ideally I would have liked to break after that, but then the Canadian exams rolled around and I said, okay, well, we got to study for this too. So I, grabbed a cup of coffee and uh, put the music on full blast and I started studying and it was three and a half weeks of intense studying for the Canadian exam. I studied for the Canadian exam. I talked about it in a separate video, but then when I went to go write it, it was another close to eight hour exam. And I thought it was actually, for me personally, being a Canadian student, I thought it was very manageable. I thought 
First of all, I finished the exam early. I thought that I was pretty confident with a lot of the stuff on there, but it's still a long study process and still a long day writing that exam. And when I finished the Canadian exam, and actually it was a few weeks before I even wrote the Canadian exam, the MCCQE1, um, one of my buddies said, hey, you already did step one. Step two, they're about to raise the score that you need to pass that exam. Just go ahead and, and write step two and, and write it before you start residency. And at that point, I was reluctant, I would say at first, to commit to the exam. But I also knew that if I could pass the step two exam just as, as quickly as possible and not have to worry about it later down the road, that I would be in an amazing position. I wouldn't have to worry about studying for it in the first half of residency. And so I did it. And um, I started studying for step two, like three days after I wrote the Canadian exam, basically. Uh, I did the UWorld question banks and I only made it through a thousand questions out of the 4,000, which that is a big mistake. I'll say to anyone getting ready for step two and when I prepare for it now, you're gonna do all 4,000 of those questions, just like I did all of the questions in the step one bank. And I didn't do any real practice exams. And, and, and this sounds like not a good form of studying for step two. I definitely was underprepared for the exam, but I think I was just burnt out from exam studying at that point. And I was relying more so on the fact that I thought that step two was going to be closer to the Canadian exam um, than step one. And I thought there was gonna be a lot of crossover between step two and the Canadian exam. Didn't really work like that for me, it turns out. And um, about, three, no, about three weeks before I wrote the step two exam, I went on vacation to Hawaii because uh, once residency started, I thought that you know I wasn't gonna have a lot of time to enjoy myself and do different things. And I thought it was really important just for me being a good resident to take some time off. So we took 10 days, we went down to Hawaii and I still don't regret that trip. That trip was amazing, but it just meant that it was 10 days that I couldn't have for studying in about a month or three and a half weeks that I had set aside to study for the, the step two exam. All this to say that my preparation was totally wrong, if not bordering non-existent for this exam. I went about it the wrong way. And in hindsight, should I have written that exam? Probably not, but I wanted to, and I don't regret writing it, but I do feel like I let a lot of people down that, that watch my videos pretty regularly. The deal was that I was gonna write three board exams in three months. That's not something that a lot of people do, and there's probably a good reason why you don't want to do that. But uh, I, I had to share it with you guys. I have a whole bunch of people asking me how I did and whether or not I was able to pull it off. And it would have been awesome if I, if I could have, but that's not what the video is here to talk about today. So we're gonna talk about what comes next, but I think the three big takeaways just to, to share here. Number one, the step two exam for me was not similar enough to the Canadian exam where I could just kind of study for the Canadian exam and then pass. The second thing was that even though I passed the step one exam, I only did a thousand questions from UWorld and that was not enough for me to pass the step two exam. And the final takeaway here is that uh, studying for three board exams over the course of three months, and if you want to take into account the three months that I spent studying for step one, so six months of exam preparation study, um, burnt me out and uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't actually pass um, all three of them, unfortunately. I think the worst part about all this is that I myself am such a competitive person. I love doing things that I'm not sure if I could actually accomplish them. Like when I, when I make goals for myself, if I'm picking a goal that's really, really easy and I know that I'm gonna be able to get it done, it doesn't, doesn't get me excited the same way as planning and picking something that I'm not sure whether or not it's even possible. And I've seen that time and time again. But the reason why I think that I like doing that is because I really do believe in this you know, put yourself under pressure so that when you're needed to do something, you're ready for it. And then that's the philosophy that I had. Um, but yeah, you, you can't be afraid to fail. And um, that, that, that's where we are right now, which brings me to the next part. And that is that I am a stubborn son of a bitch. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I, I could just say, hey, you know, I don't need this exam. I, I wrote it already. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, I passed the Canadian one, so I'm good to go for all of my qualifications. But it's, it's more so for myself at this point, and I will be writing the step two exam again um, in the next few months. I'm not sure how the preparation of my schedule is going to be now that I'm working a lot more with residency, but uh, you'll probably see it in my vlogs. I am probably going to be studying for, I think I'm gonna give myself about three or four months this time, a real proper study session and have it written hopefully before the new year is my plan right now. And to anyone wondering how I'm gonna do it, it's going to be UWorld, 
all of the questions in the step two bank in the same way that I did for step one and practice exams, practice exams, practice exams, which I didn't do the first time, but which are so, so important when it comes to practicing for the step two exam. So like I said at the beginning, this was a video that I didn't want to make, but I had to make it. And if you guys have any questions, if you're getting ready for the exam yourself, you wanna ask me some stuff, I can't talk about the specifics of the exam, but when it comes to prep or my experiences, I'm happy to share whatever I can to help you guys out. And um, wish me luck because uh, the studying is going to start sometime in the next one or two weeks um, to get back into it. We will see you all in the next one. Um, another video coming out in about two, three days or so um, when I'm not on call. Everyone have a good day and we'll see you soon.